we're gonna do a top 10. But before we get started, make sure you click that subscribe button and there's this little bell that's next to it. Click that too. Otherwise you won't get any updates. You will never know I posted a video and then you be living your life, I be living my life, you be missing stuff, I be over here okay, but you be missing stuff. We don't want that. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna start from 10 just because I can do whatever I'd wanna do because this is my video, whatever. There's 10 things in wire wrapping that I wish I knew from the beginning. Because if I knew all these things, then I wouldn't have bought all this stuff that I'm not even gonna use like ever again. Top 10 for things I wish I knew before I got started into wire wrapping. Let's do that. Let's get right into it. Number 10, and I can't emphasize this enough before you even do anything, before you pick up any of your tools, pick your wire at the store, any of that stuff, you need to use this. This Plasti Dip, it's called Plasti Dip. If you don't use any of this stuff, what's gonna end up happening is gonna, you're gonna use your tools, which are made of metal, and then you're using on metal that is metal, and then what's gonna happen is they react to each other, and so they're gonna get scratched. So when you're making like earrings like this, it's gonna have little scratch marks all over it, and you don't want that. This is when this comes in handy, and this is a lifesaver to my projects. I'm gonna show you how I use it. With this Plasti Dip, it comes in an assortment of colors. It's pictured in yellow, but I actually got red. I don't know why, it doesn't really matter, but it comes red, yellow, white, blue, whatever colors you want. And basically what I do with it is I take the tips. As you can see here, my tips are kind of worn down a little bit and the metal's kind of coming through. You don't want that. So what I do is I just take the tip and I just go and I dip it right in to the putty type stuff. You just wanna coat it slightly because the stuff is very thick. It's not easy to get a thin layer, but do your best. And then once you're done with it, you just lay it on top of another pair of pliers so that it's not flat and just allow it to dry. Make sure you put the cap back on the putty, otherwise it will dry out. Now for number nine, I wish that I knew what tools to use. I wish I knew what wires to use. I wish I knew um, what other supplies to use and what to get because if I don't know what to get, you know what happens? You buy the whole store and you don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna show you what wires to get, what tools to get and all that good jazz. So you wanna start making wire jewelry. What do you get? It all depends on what you wanna make. For me, I wanted to make everything, so I bought everything. But really, I only needed a few things. So if I'm working with gold and silver and a little bit of bronze, I ended up getting a really large gauge wire and really small gauge wire. But you need to keep this handy dandy tool on hand in order for you to be able to tell the difference between them. So. Using this, I was able to tell that I got a 16 gauge wire that I use for my big wire wrapping things. Like if I wanna make a statement necklace, the 16 gauge, which is a smaller number, meaning if it's a smaller number, then it means it's a larger gauge. And I use that wire in order to make bigger things. And that wire will be made out of aluminum. It's very pliable and easy to work with. Now, if I wanted to make more intricate things, I would use a larger number gauge wire. So I would use like 24 or 20 in order to make like earring wire or something like that. Always remember this rule. The larger the number is, the smaller the wire is. The smaller the number is, the larger the wire is. As far as the pliers go, I actually got my pliers from Lowe's of all places. I didn't get them from the jewelry store, they were too expensive. So I ended up getting them from Lowe's and their Cobalt brand. In the description box below, I'll put a link to them. So for number eight, another problem you're gonna run into. Sometimes we have these little itty bitty 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 tiny wires that we need to cut. 
And the next thing you know, that little cut is somewhere in the room. Either you step on it later or it comes flying at your eyeball. We don't want that. So I'm gonna show you how to make that not happen. So as you can see, I blackened this end piece here just so you can tell how big the piece is going to be. And what you do is put your pliers on to wherever you're gonna cut. Don't cut it yet, but with two fingers, grab that end and with your other ends of your fingers, grab the other end and then you just cut while holding the two pieces together. And then there you go. That did not take my eye out. Next for number seven, um, one of the things I wish I knew too is that, um, you know, I was wrapping all these wires and it was like, oh, it looks okay. But if you wanna add some personality to your, to your um, wire wrapping, you should use an anvil. It's so cute but it's mighty awesome to use. And it's gonna add a whole bunch of personality to your wire. So go on ahead and grab your anvil. I put a link to it in the description box below. So I did this little curly cue thing. It, it looks okay. Like I said before, it looks like a normal little curly cue thing, but we're gonna spice it up a little bit. So place it down on the flat part of your anvil and grab your ball peen hammer using the flat part of the hammer also. We're gonna start hammering this. At the top of your screen, I put a little link to the other project that I used this particular technique with. And this is what it should start to look like. It's getting these little divots on it a little bit. Um, it's flattening it out. On this part, it's, it's rounded, but on this other part where I flattened it, you can see the difference. And another thing that it does with the ball peen hammer when you're flattening it on the anvil, it actually makes the aluminum more compacted, therefore making it stronger. And that's a plus. Number six, I was all up in these craft stores looking for these beads and I found a whole bunch of beads and they didn't have a hole in them. And I'm like, I can't, what am I gonna do with this? Guess what folks? Not all beads need to have a hole. I'm gonna show you what we need to do with that. That sounds really bad. Not all beads have to have a hole. Just saying, nothing dirty. I made it all sound easy, but you really need to have patience with yourself because you're basically wrapping this bead with wire and making it cradled, if that makes sense. So not all beads have to have a hole, but I wish they did. But if they don't, it's not the end of the world. So first I start with a little loop. After dropping it, uh, I bent it back a little bit, like this. At this point, I'm just bending the wire just a little smidge, just to give it a little bit of a rounded, or more rounded look. Now what you wanna do is summon all the patience that you have inside of your body and try to wrap this wire around this bead, even though this one does have a hole, but I'm using it for demonstration purposes to make it as if it didn't have a hole. But like I said, gather all the patience that you have, use it to wrap around this bead. I started on one side and I wrapped it one time. And then I'm gonna wrap it around the top. And then I did that just once. Now from this point forward, just watch me wrap this around here because it's kind of hard to explain, but basically you're trying to get it wrapped around this stone or bead. And what we're doing is we're making sure that it's tight and that it's not gonna fall out of the wire.
another tip that I can give you is just to make sure that the wire is not loosely flapping so when you go across from the top to the bottom make sure that the wire is wrapped around itself so it's not just out there loose and then to end it off we make sure that we end it at the top and we wrap it around the top and so there goes your finished product there and now we're gonna cut that wire and we're gonna cut that wire using that same technique of holding the end so that it doesn't put our eye out. I'm using a pair of flat pliers to clean up those loops a little bit. So that looks a little bit better. And so as you can see, it's covered on all sides. So it's cradled and all beads don't have to have a hole apparently. Now for number five, if they do have a hole, don't just slip it on the wire and just go on with your life. We gotta spice that up a bit. Put a little sauce on that. I mean, come on. We're gonna do that. So I found this cute little pink faceted bead here. It's simple enough. I'm gonna start by cutting a piece of wire here. I'm gonna string it on. Now I'm gonna take my little needle nose pliers and I'm gonna bend it and make a loop on one end here. So after I wrap the one side, I'm gonna take the end of the wire from that one side and I'm gonna start spiraling it. Once you started the initial spiral, take your flat nose and just grab the end of the wire and just start, just hold it and just keep spiraling it. And sometimes you can even do it with your hands. So now you're gonna take that spiral and lay it flat on one side of the bead. Now you can do that same thing for the other side. You're gonna bend it and then you're gonna do a loop. After you do that loop, you're gonna be wrapping around the post there like you did for the other side. It should look like this now. Now here's the part where I hesitate and get a little nervous because I want to make the spiral match the other side. So just make sure that you give enough, yourself enough wire for that to happen. Now from this point, start spiraling. Some people have been known to glue these parts down so that they stay down, but I've been known to be very lazy, so I didn't. So here's what it should look like. You got spirals on both sides and loops on both sides. All right, so for number four, I hope I am going in order. I hope I've been saying numbers up to this point. At this point, I really don't know if I have been, but whatever. Number four in my mind is you can make legit rings using this thing. This little ring. What is this? Dowel, ring dowel, whatever. It's got all these different sizes on it and it's all labeled, but this thing kind of failed me a little bit and I'm gonna show you how I fixed it. So this is the dowel, the ring dowel. I'll put a little link below in the description box of where to buy it. So as you can see, I poked a hole in where it says seven and eight, because those are basically the two sizes that I would use. And basically the concept of this um, dowel is the fact that when you're making a ring, you basically wrap it around this dowel. Now the problem is, is that it kept slipping off the dowel as I was wrapping it around. So let's see how these holes are gonna help with that. So you're gonna start by sticking the wire inside of that hole there, wherever, whatever size you wanna use. And then you just start wrapping it at that point. So from this point, it's not gonna slip off the dowel at all. 
And that's why I put those holes in there the way that I did. So from this point, you can wrap it as many times as you want. I chose to wrap it many times. At this point, I wanted to cut the wire, so I did. And then I'm gonna continue wrapping this. By the way, this is 16 gauge aluminum wire. That's why this is so easy to bend. After I'm done wrapping my wire, I pull out that end that's stuck inside the dowel. I just pull that a little bit out, not too much. I just need to pull it out enough so I can get it off the dowel. So once I have it off the dowel, I'm just gonna secure the ends so that they're not sticking up and able to scratch or damage some of your clothes. This is the ring that I actually made with it. Um, nothing fancy, nothing crazy, just, you know, wrapped around the dowel a couple times and then I took the, these are the ends of the wire and so I just bent them around and made a little cute little ring. And at any point you can always put like a little stone on it or something, whatever, but it's a legit ring that like could fit on any one of my fingers. It's dope. So with number three, I wasn't exactly sure if this was actually going to work, um, but I really wanted to um, make a little simple little post earring that you could just put in your ear. You know those little post things. I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Number three is basically, you can make your own posts. You don't have to go and buy them. What? Start by determining how long you want your post and then bend the wire to that length. As you can see, this is the end and this is the part of the post that's going to be sticking out of the ear. So using my flat pliers, um, I'm going to start doing a little spiral on the part that's going to be sticking out of the ear. Okay, now I have a nice size spiral going here. Now let's say we want to put this little bead on there. It's a cute little bead. I think it will fit just perfectly. So now what we're going to do, if we're going to put that bead on, we need an end to slip it on. So we're going to cut the end here. Now I'll just slip that bead on. And then from this point, I need a place for this bead to go and for it to rest. So I'm gonna pull, start pushing out the spiral so that it can make a little divot, like a little place for it to sit. All right, I think that looks good. See how it's making a little space there? So now I'm going to bend it up and I'm going to slip the bead back on there. Now just start moving the wire enough so that the bead can go all the way down and rest inside of that little cup area. And just like this. Now I'm going to start wrapping this end all the way around this bead. Now it should start to look like this and I'm thinking I'm just gonna cut that end off there. Now make sure your ends are tucked under. And now here it is. All right, so at this point I'm like, I'm discovering all these top 10 things that I wish I knew and I'm like, y'all can't tell me nothing. Look at these earrings. These earrings are awesome. I love them. But because of the wire that I use, I have to use pencil erasers to hold it on. So use wire that's a little bit thinner than what I use. So then you can use the regular backs to put, we get the earrings on. So look at that earring, no. Oh. Which brings me to my next point. For number two, you can make any shape out of wire. I'm gonna show you what I mean. 
So go ahead and grab a piece of paper and a pen. And in my case, I decided to do the typical that everybody else is doing and I decided to draw love. So I think this is perfect. So we're gonna use that. And what I usually use for that is some 16 gauge gold aluminum wire. Hasn't failed me yet. Now get yourself a nice length of it. So using a combination of tools and your written example here, start bending your wire in the shape of love. So now you have the word love made out of wire. Another tip to keep in mind is have in mind what you want to do first. If you're going to make a necklace or if you're going to make a bracelet, having that in mind first will determine how large or how small you should make it. So now let's move on to these ends here. What you want to do is obviously you're going to need to have a loop. So make a loop on either end because that's the way you connect it to either a bracelet or a necklace. Use that technique we learned in number eight to not put your eye out. Now that we know that we are able to create the word love out of wire, what else can we create? You could possibly do your name. You could do something nice like hello. You could do a word you wanna call somebody. You could do a word about one of your favorite things. Y'all, I made a necklace that says butts. Why? Because I can. Last but not least, number one. My number one thing that I wish I knew is that you can make your own earring wire. You don't have to go and buy it from the store. Now, I never buy any earring wire because I'm gonna show you how I make it. That's my number one. Let's do that. So we're gonna use that same bead that we did the wire wrapping on as an earring. This is to demonstrate that we should always have our earring already ready to go. So we're gonna start with a little loop and with a little end here. I'm also gonna put a link to the video that I actually used this technique in. Now we're gonna take and slip on our earring on that end there. We should make sure that the loop is not tight. Make sure it's loose enough so that we could slip the earring on easily. Once that's on, we're gonna grab our pliers just to hold it. And then we're going to start wrapping that end and making a little coil at the end. After that's done, you're gonna take your pliers and then you're gonna bend the wire backwards. Next, you're going to shape the wire into a hook, making sure we bend up the end. It should look like this. From this point, you're gonna cut the very end. Now we have this other end here that we need to deal with. Now grab your pliers and bend it so that it's near the very end of the wire hook, just like this. Now we're gonna create a little bit of a closure for it. We're gonna take a pair of pliers and we're gonna grab that little tiny end there and we're gonna just bend it over. 
It should look just like this. And then now you can close it. Boom. And you got a pair of earrings in the process. And then this is the finished product right here. Yay. So you got the, the wire wrapping here. And then this is the earring wire. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Now you guys know the secret of my top 10 things I wish I knew before I started doing my jewelry and wire wrapping stuff. Because if I didn't know any of this stuff, which I did not, I bought everything in the store and I didn't even need it and I had to sell everything. And we don't wanna do that. So as always, I hope you guys like this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and commenting and all that good stuff and following me on my Instagram and stuff. I love it. So I guess I'll see you on my next video. Oh God, God, I'm never gonna get the hang of this.